Please join me in the Gospel of Luke, or according to Luke, chapter 5, verse 1 through 26. <clears throat> so it was, as the multitude pressed upon about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gethsemane and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. And it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus, and he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put on out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew from the wilderness into the wilderness and prayed. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they, ran up, they went up on the housetop and led him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven you, or to say rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go, your, go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been laying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Please be seated. Good morning to everyone. What a blessing and a privilege to be here. It should be a privilege to all of us to be able to be together and hear God's word proclaimed. That should be something that we look forward to every single Lord's Day is being together with the saints. I hope each of us will take the time to come back tonight and to be here for the singing night and to stay for the fellowship meal planned to be uh, spend time together. You know, I uh, the young couple that uh, lost the one-year-old will be here tonight, and they're actually bringing a dish. 
So we need to encourage them. Surely if somebody in that situation can come, we ought to be able to come as members of the body of Christ. Now this uh, past week when I was in Tennessee, and I appreciate the congregation giving the help, especially to Tina, you know, during a diff difficult time, but I got to eat lunch with Bill and Lori B Boyd and one of my brothers at, all at the same time. And so we enjoyed spending time with them. Of course, you know that Lori held the last Ladies Day here and Bill the last gos gospel meeting. And also got to go to a gospel meeting on Sunday night. Paul Meacham Jr. was speaking, and uh, he's been a friend of mine uh, almost since I've been a member of the church. Uh, so I w Tina had found out on you know through Facebook that he's holding the meeting over here. I said, "Well, I know where I'm going Sunday night." And Paul reminded me, and I'm not, now I'm going to pick some brains here. Paul and his wife' name is April Meacham attended here as members at one point. Now, you that have come after Katrina, now you're certainly not going to remember, but uh, I would be interested to know if any of you remember them, because he asked me, and so I'm going to have to tell him something. <laughs> so you that have been here uh, from maybe the beginning, Paul and a April Meacham, and he's actually junior, I don't know if he was called that, but tell me if you remember him. I would, uh, I would be glad to know. Let's look at our... Uh, scripture text today is going to be a textual sermon rather than a verse here and a verse there. You know, there's both kinds of uh, different kinds of sermons that you preach. And so today we want to simply take the Bible out and go verse by verse and look at some verses that I think will teach us some uh, valuable lessons as we walk day to day. And brethren, what we need to do every day of our lives is examine ourselves to see if we be in the faith. Because our greatest purpose is to plan and prepare for heaven, isn't it? It's not all the things that this life has to offer. Oh, some of them are very good, aren't they? But that's not the greatest uh, reason that we're here. The greatest reason that we're here is to serve God and to prepare to be with God after this life is over. But let's look at verse 1. And I want to make some points here. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. A couple points here. Uh, one I want to point out first, Gennesaret, it's got four different names. You see it in different places. You may want to write these right by the, this name. And it, it, it's all the same, same sea. But the sea of Gennesaret, as it's mentioned here, is also Tiberias the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, and I, I know you, you hear that one, and one that you don't hear quite as much is the, is the Sea of Chinnereth, C-H-I-N-N-E-R-E-T-H. -E and so you see those uh, names, and it's all talking about the same place. And now when we realize that, that may help us to understand something. That, well, that's taking place in the same place, you know, that uh, maybe another event uh, transpired. But also something that's very important, and even more important than that, and I want to kind of move that out of the way, is it says the people pressed upon the Lord to hear the word of God. Now that's good, isn't it? They put forth some effort to hear the word of God. Brethren, that should be what we want to, want to do in our lives, is press toward the Lord. Now we're going to see where some had some wrong attitudes as we go down through here, and, and some had the right attitude. And, you know, we can really examine ourselves and say, which one am I? Am I one with the right attitude or the wrong attitude? But now here's something, and it actually fits, Scott, with the uh, Bible class, at least one, one point of what we were talking about, the people pressed upon him. You know, we, uh, Scott talked a little bit about, and perhaps somebody made some comments about, uh, you know, we, we need to know more about the word of God. And, well, how do you know more about the word of God? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And here's one thing we have to be cautious of, brethren. We don't want to be those that all we want in our life of a spiritual nature is what we get here at the building. You know, it's good to come to Bible classes. If you're not coming to Bible class, I encourage you to do so. And, you know, if you're not coming back Sunday night or Wednesday, I encourage you to do that. That's all important. But brethren, we must go much beyond that. That's just actually touching the hem of the garment of what we need to do. But sometimes, as members of the body of Christ, we don't want to go further than that. We just want what we have here. 
Brethren, when, when you go back and look, especially in the book of Acts, you know, when the church first began, what do you see? They were meeting house to house, spending time together. They were studying and teaching the word of God. That should be what we want to do. And there's so many ways. There's so many ways that we can, uh, you know, especially with the modern gadgets that we have. Uh, there's ac actually and absolutely no excuse. Now, one thing that I, I missed and got to enjoy it at least one night uh, this, this past week, it, it's springtime and it's gospel meeting time in uh, Warren County, back in my hometown. It is here too. But if it, and we even talked about it with the Boyds, and Lori Boyd actually made the point, and I, the same point I made here. At, at this time of the year and, you know, through the spring, you have to pick and choose which gospel meeting you're going to. You know, so, so what, what does that mean? There's no reason not to hear the gospel proclaimed. There, there's no reason not to spend time with brethren. I mean, it's just there. You know, God has thrown the, the spiritual food down, and it, it's there to eat. But brethren, I would encourage you also to look at this board back here. I see many meetings, ladies' days, that uh, are on that board. Have you checked that out? Do you know about them? Well, well, you should. But now, stop and think about other things. Now, the GBN network, uh, I got to pick up part of it as I was going through. I think I actually hit the tip, tip end of Georgia as, as I was going more the scenic route this time and actually, actually the, the shorter route. So I got to hear uh, B.J. Clark and Mike Hickson, some on there having some discussions, and it was uh, about miracles. I mentioned that Wednesday night, very interesting discussion. And, but GBN, you can get it on your phone. You can get it on your computer. What, what's that mean? Anywhere that you're out 24-7, it's available. You can pull up In Search of the Lord's Way on your phone or on your computer 24-7. Now, that's if you desire to eat the spiritual food that's been provided for us. And so the food is there. We must choose, are we going to press toward Jesus? Or sometimes we allow other things in our life to get in our way. Brethren, we need to make sure they don't get in our way. And that all of our spirituality is not gauged upon just being at the building and what we get here. And saying, hey, I'll see you next, next time. We need to expand out beyond that. And so, brother, here's one thing I noticed, the words of truth. You know, I received those from uh, actually Patrick Morrison that held a meeting there. Now, somebody else is going to be taken over in the very near future. But he mails those to us, and I give them out to different people. And, but I laid four back there, just, just four uh, on the table. And only three out of the four were taken before I gave the other one away to somebody else. You know what that tells me? Oh, you know, we don't want to pick up and put into our hands, into our minds, a whole lot of extra. We, get, we got what we wanted. Mm, got my, I, I stamped my ticket. Brethren, you've got to look for, for, uh, to uh, those things that are there for you. The bulletin's there for you. It has, it has spiritual food for you that you can take advantage of and hear the word of God. There's no reason, no reason for us not to know the will of God. You know, Claudia mails out the bulletin people, and she mails it out to people that have a desire to hear the word of God. And this particular issue uh, of the bulletin that uh, Tina puts together has the old landmarks speaker, Kermit Webb, he wrote this article. So you get to look at something that we have been supporting for years by Kermit Webb and also another article by Dan Gully, and you get to take those things and just sometimes a brief thought. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to have, spend a few hours. Sometimes a few moments can really change our day when we spend it serving God and digging in his word. Just some thoughts sometimes can provoke uh, uh, more thoughts. You know, when I heard, uh, heard Paul Meacham Jr. preach uh, Sunday night, I said, Paul, that was a wonderful sermon. I said, it's so good that I'm going to preach it next, next Sunday. And you know what Paul said? He said, well, I don't know where I stole the outline from. You know what that tells you, don't you? Preachers uh, send outlines around. And, you know, uh, sometimes some may say, well, we're, I read that somewhere else. Well, I'm glad you remember it because sometimes we don't. We don't know where we got it. At. You know, we try to give credit when credit's due. Actually, what I'm preaching now is not part of what Paul preached on. We may come to some of that. But you get thoughts. You should be getting thoughts 
as the word of God is proclaimed. Whether it be Scott teaching, me preaching, somebody else. We, we need to have those thoughts and we need to think on these things. We need to think on things that are spiritual. It changes our lives when we do that. You know, one thing I do, and, and I've told you this several times, this is kind of redundant, but it's still good. But I want to remind you, two times I go, uh, I go through the Bible completely, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, in the car. Because, it, I mean, you've got it there. You, you've got it. You put it in. You listen to it. But now I say that for a reason, not just to say that I do that. You know, still with that being said, I still have time to listen to talk radio or listen to some other CDs with music. I still have time to do that. We spend a lot of time in our car driving places, don't we? You can take advantage of whether it be GBN, listen to the Bible, whatever it may be. We have the time, brethren. We have to make sure that we use that time. Now in verse 2, it says, And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed, prayed him that he would thrust out a little further from the land and sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. Now, well, the important point there, they're tired. They've been working all night. And some of you have been commercial fishermen. That's no easy, easy task. But he said, since you've told me to do this, this is what I'm going to do. Brethren, what does God tell us to do? Hasn't he told us to cast our nets out? Aren't we? Do you remember that we're fishers of what? Men? Did we take that class? What happened to that? You know, nobody in a long, long time has asked me, do, do you have copy number two? I'm studying with somebody. I wish they would. I wish somebody was using that. They said, we need to order some more. Brethren, we were taught, how, you know, so we've been taught, what are we doing? The Lord told them to cast their net out. Do you trust the Lord? He's told you to cast your net out. Are you willing to do what the Lord said? Peter and James and John, you're going to see here, you know, uh, th they're going to do that. They're going to do what the Lord said. And when they did that, we're going to notice what happened. And when they had this done, they, they enclosed a great multitude of fish in their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners like they're in business together. Uh, you know, sometimes we, we don't even think about that part. Which were in the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Now, can you imagine that? You know, I, I would have liked to have been there. <laughs> you know, I would like to, I'd like to have seen this. You know, the both ships. They had so many fish. Both ships are filled and are trying to sink. That's when they obeyed the Lord. What about us? Brethren, if we do what God says for us to do, God's going to give us the increase. Amen. When we do what God said to do, we need to cast out those nets. We need to be fishers of men. You know, Jesus commanded us, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the command of the Lord. That's not an option. I want you to think about something for a moment. And this is, I, I'm very sincere in this. I want you to think. Uh, you know, this is not pushing. I, I want you to think. Uh, who is it that you're trying to study with? You need to have somebody that you're praying about, that you're trying to study with. Now, and I want to do something. Sometimes you have to go slow, especially with certain people. You, you, can't, you, you can't push people. You can't drive them. But I want you to think about something for a moment. Who is it that you're trying to study with? Now, I realize somebody can say no. I get that point. You know, I've been told no more than one time. But we need to be trying to study with people. That's a commandment of the Lord. That's not a commandment of the preacher. That's what Jesus himself said. So we ought to be doing that. It says, when Simon Peter saw it, 
He fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. He realized the power that Jesus Christ had. Lord, I am not worthy to be in your presence. He knew he could see by the evidence. We caught nothing all night. You said cast out and we took two boats and we almost sunk those boats. Do we believe the Lord? Are we bowing down to the Lord saying, Lord, I'm not even worthy to be called one of your servants. I, I'm not even worthy to wear the name, but you have allowed me to be called Christian. You know, not everybody gets to wear that name, do they? We needed to make sure to the very best of our ability that we live up to it. That we live up to being what Jesus wants to be. Yes, I know that we'll fall short, but we need to make sure that we strive. That we strive to do what God has told us to do. And verse 9 says, notice, for he was astonished at all that were, were with, and all that were with him at the drought of fish which they had taken. Everybody there was amazed. Now, quest, uh, a thought. We realize that Jesus is not here personally, but his commandments are. And it will amaze us when we do what God has said, the results that we get. Sometimes we are trusting in ourselves, well, I can't do this. You know, really, we've said we, that's actually a proper answer. I can't, but the Lord can. And if I'll do what he said, now I'll say, I'm doing the work of the Lord. I'm not doing the work of somebody else. The Lord's never been a failure. His word never turns, returns void. It always accomplishes everything that it was supposed to do. Every single thing. And when you do what God said, even in your personal life, you, you know, even if you ask people to study and they say no and they, or they quit the study, oh, that's not on you, that's on them. You know, Thursday night I studied with a man and for uh, over an hour and claimed to be a member of the church and wanted me to reach out to his father. But first he wanted to check me out. And I thought when he said he wanted to check me out, I thought he'd make sure that I wasn't doing something unscriptural. That's, I thought, this would be good. This won't last but a second. It turned into quite a, a lengthy conversation. He wanted somebody that thought, well, anybody that believes in Jesus Christ, even if they're, if they're in denominations, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going down that road. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, I want to reach out to your father. And I'll be happy to do that. But we need to look at some scriptures. We need to look at what the Bible says. And we'd re read a Bible. Sometimes they even let him read it. He he'd do the reading. And he'd just go to something else that he thought. Brethren, man can't save himself. Oh Lord, I know the way of man is not himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his steps. Jeremiah 10 verse 23. We have to do what the Lord says. Now, question. I tried to reach out to this man and study with him, up to this point he rejected the word of God. That's not on me, that's on him. But nevertheless, I'm going to reach out. I'm going to reach out to people. You know, some are going to reject things that you try to do to encourage and help. You still reach out. You still do the will, will of God. Now notice verse 10. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon, and, you know, they were amazed as well, if you remember what we were seeing. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. Brethren, that is us that Jesus, Jesus just described right there. And it should describe us, shouldn't it? It should describe what we are every day of our life. That we're fishers of men. We're disciples of the Lord. We should stop and think for a moment. You can't be a disciple of the Lord if you're not doing what the, the one that you're following says, can you? You know, the thing, you know, I, I lived in Arizona at one time doing mission work, Mormon country. We were really close to Utah, so it was Mormon country. Could I claim to be a Mormon if I weren't, weren't following the Book of Mormon and following their doctrine? How could I? Well, I'm a Mormon. They would say, well, you don't, you don't do anything. You do everything contrary to what we do. But, but I'm a Mormon. Could you 
claim to be a member of the body of Christ and the disciple of Jesus if you're not doing what the Lord says. We're not, obviously, you don't get too over-concerned, and we're not going to try to finish all these verses today. Thought about it, but I, I don't know how with some of those. But that's a pretty good place to stop, isn't it? Now you're fishers of men, disciples of the Lord. Man, we should, not arrogantly, not with pride, we should thankfully wear the title of Christian and be glad that the Lord has commanded us and allowed us to be his servants and to go into all the world. Now, Jesus had a very simple plan, didn't he? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Have you obeyed the gospel? Perhaps you've done that and you've let it slip. You know, we, this certainly fits about being a disciple, doesn't it? Change that. Change that. Change it today. You know, one thing we have in the Lord's church is uh, a, a lack of participation by so many members. And it hurts the cause of Christ. Well, let, let, let's change that. Let's, let, let's change that at Chalmette. Let's change it percentage-wise that we have more people participating. I want you to think about, uh, and if you're not aware, so we need to look at some, we'll, we'll remind you. First, you can look on the board and see so many events. But look at Chalmette. And we've got a men's breakfast coming up. They won't let me cook. I could do some other things, but they won't let me cook. And that's wise. And we've got a youth night coming up. We've got a gospel meeting coming up. I'm, you know, Mickey's coming. I, you know, we, sometimes we do what we can. A lot of things, that, you know, if you're not involved, it's not because there's not opportunities, is there? Is it, is what I should have said. See, the opportunities are there. Be disciples. Serve the Lord. Oh, the opportunity is there. We just got to seize the opportunity, don't we? This morning, would you do that? If you need to respond, would you do